In this video, we're going to take a look at mass spectrometry and the mass spectrometer and how we can use them to determine the abundance of different isotopes as well as the relative atomic mass of our elements. So let's start with the mass spectrometer here. So this picture is a mass spectrometer. You do not need to know how it works or what all the different components is, but essentially what we do is we take our sample our sample gets ionized, so creates different ions that have different masses, and they get deflected by a different amount. And you can measure the amount of deflection. And so essentially, every isotope would have a different mass, so it would have a different deflection. And so we would get these patterns that we could interpret that we could then determine what the relative atomic mass is and what element we have. So it's an instrument that's used to determine the relative atomic mass of an element. And as I just said, we can use it to show the isotopic composition because it's going to show us all of the different isotopes that are involved in our sample. Now, what we end up getting from a mass spectrometer is something called a mass spectrum. And so this is a plot, it's a graph of the relative abundance of each isotope that's plotted on the y-axis versus the mass to charge ratio that generally corresponds to the mass of the isotope. So you don't need to worry too much about the mass to charge ratio. It's really what charges are created as we're ionizing these, uh, these different isotopes. But generally that mass to charge ratio is really just the mass of the isotope because most of the time the charge is just plus one. Now we can then take this graph and take the height of each peak, or I guess essentially more properly, it's the area under each peak. And that's going to tell us the relative abundance of each of the respective isotopes. So let's take a look at an example. So here's a mass spectrum of zirconium. Now this is really simplified. In real life, if we saw this mass spectrum, it would be way, way messier. Um, but this is just kind of a simplified sort of mass spectrum from us. So we can see on the y-axis, we've got relative abundance. And then on the x-axis, we've got mass to charge ratio. And so you can see peaks. We've got five peaks. We've got one at 90, 91, 92, 94, and 96. And they all have different heights because this is the related to the abundance, the relative abundance of each one. Okay, so we've got five peaks, which means that we have five isotopes of zirconium. And then they have masses of, as I said, 90, 91, 92, 94, and 96. If we wanted to figure out the atomic mass, the relative atomic mass of zirconium, what we'd do is we'd have to come take a ruler and against our graph here, figure out the relative abundances of each of our isotopes. So you can see the one at 90 is a little bit over 50. And then the other ones are much, much smaller, but we would want to measure each one. And in this case, you know, it's a little bit hard to see on this slide. So the relative um, abundances for zirconium 90 is 51.5%. For 96, this tiny little peak here is only 2.8%. Then we've got zirconium 92 little bit bigger at 17.1 percent, 91 is 11.2 percent, and then our final one zirconium 94 is a little bit bigger again at 17.4 percent. So then now that we've gotten the relative abundances from our mass spectrum, we can do our usual calculation to find the relative atomic mass of zirconium. That's it for this lesson. Uh, let's move on to our next task.